Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. This lesson will show you how to write a letter of explanation. One of the seven most common IELTS letter topics. I take you through the whole process of writing it step by step. Here's what the lesson includes. The question structure, the letter structure, formal or informal, how to tell the difference, the greeting and sign off, how to generate ideas, and the lesson also includes two sample letters. First, the structure of the question. All questions for IELTS letters have the same structure. They're made up of three parts. Part one is the topic, part two, the person you must write to, and part three, what you should write about, which is listed as three bullet points. Here's a sample question for a letter of explanation with the three parts illustrated. You're planning a holiday abroad and will be visiting a town where an old friend lives. You haven't spoken to this friend in a few years. Write a letter to your friend. In your letter, give your friend a brief update of your life since you were last in touch. Explain why you will be travelling to his or her town. And say what you plan to do when you visit their town. The first sentence gives the topic of the question, which is that you're planning a holiday abroad and will be visiting a town where an old friend lives. The second sentence tells you who you should be writing the letter to. In this case, a friend who you haven't spoken to in a few years. And the three bullet points tell you what you should write about. Should give your friend a brief update of your life since you were last in touch. You should explain why you'll be travelling to his or her town and you should say what you plan to do when you get there. Understanding the different parts of the question will help you to quickly analyse and plan your answer. To help you plan, use the letter structure I'm about to show you. For a full lesson on planning, study my lesson on how to plan an IELTS letter. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. The layout of your letter should follow the structure of the question and consist of four paragraphs with a greeting at the beginning and a sign-off at the end. Use this easy to remember six-part structure. Start with the greeting which will be Dear, whoever you're writing to. In paragraph one, state the purpose of the letter, that is, your reason for writing. In paragraph two, write about the first bullet point. In paragraph 3, write about the second bullet point. And in paragraph 4, write about the third bullet point. Finally, sign off your letter. All you need to do to create your plan is to add in the details from the question, like this. The person we're writing to is our friend, so that's who we'll address in our greeting. Paragraph 1 is the reason or purpose for writing, which is to tell your friend about your upcoming holiday. Paragraph two will be about the first bullet point, which is to give an update of your life since you were last in touch. Paragraph three will be about the second bullet point, where we'll explain why we're traveling to his or her town. And paragraph four will be about the third bullet point, when we'll say what we plan to do when we visit. Finally, we'll sign off the letter. IELTS letters must be written in the appropriate tone and style. There are two options, formal to someone you don't know or don't know well and informal to a friend. It's essential that you're able to identify what type of letter you're required to write. Follow this rule. If the question includes the word friend, use informal language. If the question does not include the word friend, use formal language. The person we're writing to in this question is a friend, so we'll write an informal letter. This leads us on to the opening of the letter, the greeting. Always start an informal letter with dear, followed by the first name of the friend. For example, dear Ellen. You probably use hi and hello in emails and texts, but for letters, dear is more appropriate, so stick with this. If we were writing a formal letter of explanation, 
we would choose one of these two options for the greeting. Use Dear Sir or Madam if you don't know the name of the person you're writing to. Or use Dear plus their surname if you do know their name. For example, Dear Mr Smith or Dear Mrs Jones. The form of greeting you use will determine how you sign off your letter. For an informal letter to a friend, use one of these phrases for your sign off, followed by your first name. All the best. See you soon. Keep in touch. For example, keep in touch, Jackie. For a formal letter, there are three ways you can sign off. Yours sincerely, yours faithfully and kind regards. The correct one will depend on who you're addressing. Follow these rules when deciding which to use. Use yours sincerely if you've started the letter with dear and the surname, for example, dear Mr Jones. And use yours faithfully if you started the letter with dear sir or madam. Kind regards is formal but friendly and is also appropriate for many situations. It's particularly useful if you struggle to remember how to spell sincerely and faithfully. For our letter, we'll use this greeting and sign off. Dear Ellen, I hope to see you soon, Jackie. We're now ready to think up some ideas to write about. We have the guidelines of the three bullet points to help us, so this won't be difficult. You only have to write 150 words. So you won't need many ideas, but do make sure that you write about each bullet point and develop each idea fully. They don't have to be the best ideas you can possibly think of. Go with your first thoughts and don't waste time trying to think of better ideas. However, they must relate directly to the bullet points. Note them beside each bullet point on the exam paper like this. For give a brief update of your life since last in touch, I've noted down, got engaged, bought a flat. For explain why you'll be travelling to his or her town, I've written coach tour of Scotland. And to say what you plan to do when you visit their town, I've written visit Edinburgh Castle. So those are my ideas. And that's our planning completed. Once you've had some practice, you'll be able to do this in just a few minutes. Taking time to plan makes writing IELTS letters far quicker and easier than if you don't do this step. You'll also write a better letter and get higher marks. We're now ready to start writing our letter. Here's our plan again, with all our notes added in. Pause the video if you want to spend a few minutes studying it. We've already decided on the greeting, so we'll start by writing paragraph 1. In the first paragraph, you must state the reason for writing the letter, that is, its purpose, which is to tell your friend about your trip. Many students make the mistake of missing this purpose sentence out, but it's very important. Including it will gain you marks. It requires only one sentence. For example, I'm just writing to let you know that I'm going to be visiting Edinburgh in a few months' time. And here's a top vocabulary tip. One of the easiest ways to show the examiner that you know you're writing an informal letter is to use contractions. For example, I'm, I've, you'll, we'd, there. Do not use contractions in formal letters. They are in formal language. In the second paragraph, you write about bullet point one, which is to give a brief update of your life since you were last in touch. My idea for this is that I got engaged and bought a flat. Remember to keep the language informal. You could write something like this. So much has happened since I last wrote, so I'll quickly bring you up to date before telling you about the trip. The big news is that Jamie and I have finally got engaged. He even got down on one knee to propose, which was so romantic. The wedding is planned for June next year, and we do hope you can come. We've also bought a flat, and we moved in together last month. The third paragraph should cover the second bullet point, which is to explain why you'll be travelling to his or her town. 
My idea for this was that I would be on a coach tour of Scotland. You could write something like this for it. The holiday we've booked is a two-week coach tour of Scotland. We're spending most of the time on the west coast and in the Highlands, but we also get a full day in Edinburgh on the 12th of May. Paragraph 4 addresses the third bullet point, which is to say what you plan to do when you visit their town. My idea for this was to visit Edinburgh Castle. Here's the idea developed into a paragraph. The trip includes a guided tour of Edinburgh Castle in the morning but we're then free for the rest of the day. It would be fantastic to catch up with you if you're able to meet us for tea somewhere. Let me know if you can make it. Here's our finished letter of explanation. Pause the video and read through it. Note how all the elements come together and the ideas flow from one to the next. This is what you're aiming for in your letter. To get some practice writing this type of letter, Write a letter for the question on this slide. You rent a four bedroom house which you share with three friends. However, there are several problems with this house that need fixing. Write a letter to the letting agency. In the letter, explain your situation, describe the problems with the house and say what you would like to happen. This letter is to someone you don't know, so it must be written in a formal tone and style. Use the planning structure I've shown you to plan before you start writing. Here's a sample letter. Can you identify the language and grammar structures I've used to give it a formal tone? Note that it doesn't contain any contractions. You'll find lessons on other common IELTS letter topics on the website and my YouTube channel. I've put a link to the IELTS writing menu page where you'll find all the lessons in the notes below this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another lesson soon. Goodbye for now.